Um, and this takes us to the second joke. So there's a guy, he's crawling around on the street under a lamppost, and he's looking around, and some cop walks by, goes, uh, what are you doing? He said, well, I lost my wallet, and I'm looking for it. And the cop says, well, I'll help you look for it. So they look around, and after a while, the cop says, are you sure you lost it here? Because we're not finding it. He says, oh, no, I lost it over in the park. And he's like, well, why are you looking here? And he says, because the light's better here. Okay? So here's the thing. Focusing on achievement. If you want to really understand why some kids are learning, why some kids aren't learning in the same environment, what kinds of things kids actually need, what, what helps them learn better, what keeps them from learning, those are hard and they're messy and they're uncomfortable because as you start to look at those issues, one of the things that happens is you find out that a lot of things you've been doing, basically cutting the end off a roast for generations, maybe you're actually doing more harm than good. And that creates a lot of emotional resistance people don't want to change. On the other hand, money, money's easy. Spreadsheets, formulas, take money from those guys, give it to those guys. We know how to do that. We know how to tax and spend. That's a done deal. And so it's much more comfortable to focus on money. But here's the thing. And if you take one sentence away from tonight, you forget everything else, it's this. Money is the lamppost of education, OK? By which I mean this guy is never going to find his wallet until he leaves the lamppost, right? He's got to get over to the park where the solutions are. Doesn't mean it'll be easy to find or he'll find it right away. But he sure as hell isn't going to find it here, OK? and so. As long as we are focused on money, as long as every discussion about schools turns into a discussion about money, this is us, okay? We're crawling around looking at something that doesn't make any difference, where the answers that we need are not gonna be anywhere to be found. So, one of the things that uh, Walensky, his main slide at his presentations, at least when we went to, um, had a picture of a craft chalkboard. And it, it was you know, supposed to, Tug at your heart spring, heart strings, you know, bring tears to your eyes that these kids have to work with a, a craft chalkboard. And what was interesting is uh, there was a state rep there who stood up and said, you know, Kevin yeah, Verbal. Let's just Kevin Verbal. Okay, so Kevin Verbal's there and he and he said, you know, Abe Lincoln didn't even have a chalkboard. He had a shovel and some embers, some coals from his fire, and he taught himself to read and to be a lawyer. Okay. And so the, the thing about that is, I, I, you know, if money is not the issue, what is? And I will just, because people like solutions, not just problems, I'm going to say, I believe the problem is motivation, right? And what occurs to me is there are two questions that you almost never hear people ask when they're talking about education because they're so busy talking about money. That is, if you want to learn something, who can stop you? Especially now. Nobody. Okay, and if you don't want to learn something, can anybody make you? Is there any amount of money that you can spend on a kid to make him learn something he isn't interested in? Can you buy him enough stuff? Can you get him enough programs? You know, you can't. Okay, so, however, I, I do want to, you know, make a caveat there, which is, I'm not here to say I know what the answer is, because then that just sort of makes me like everybody else. I really, my point in bringing this up is, we can't even have a discussion like this until we stop obsessing about money, okay? That's the first condition. You have to be willing to walk away from the lamppost and get over there and say, maybe it's parental involvement. Maybe it's, you know, the, maybe it's, it's all about individual development. Who knows? But we're never gonna find out as long as we're just worried about, well, who's paying what tax rate and what's fair in terms of money being spent. So, um, that's basically, I hope you go home, you remember money is the lamppost of education, and anytime you get into a discussion about education, people start talking about money, what I'm hoping is you'll just be like, that's not the issue. Let's talk about the issue. Yes? Has anybody measured, since the Walensky case, the increase in cost for administration? By this I mean, we had, Back when my children were in school, we had like 20 SAUs. Mm -hmm. Now it's over 100, I believe. Yeah. And. Yeah, I think we're 99. We're the latest one. Yet yeah. our population yeah. is smaller now mm -hmm. than it was then. Right. The other thing that comes to my mind is I live in Deerfield. 
It's very easy to measure cost of students. I take out the high school tuition and the high school bus okay. from the total budget, and then I take the rest of the money and I divide it by the number of students in the school. We're over $23,000 for an elementary student. We're at about $13,000 for our tuition students okay. which go to Concord High School. Yeah. So, I take the thing called schooldigger.com mm -hmm. and I go in and I look at the Deerfield students where they fall in the state. Mm -hmm. Last year, we were 180th out of 200 elementary schools. Okay. So, we've gone from spending in the 90s a little over $5,000 per elementary student to spending over $23,000, yeah. and we're now down at 180th. Yeah, right. And so, so this if, is, you take, yeah. if you take money, it isn't what's doing it. But I'll tell <laughs> you, back when I was very involved for years under special education. And we did a thing that said, in Harlem, they didn't know how to fix the schools. The kids were just failing. Mm -hmm. So they decided to be innovative and let the parents choose which school they wanted their kids to go to from mm -hmm. Harlem. Mm -hmm. They went wherever the parents chose. From testing this year to the year they changed schools, they went up. Their scores went up. Okay. The only thing that changed was the parental involvement. The educational yes. program in New York was the same for all the schools. Yeah. But her parents, who had chosen the school, then made sure their children were going to succeed because they were responsible. They'd chosen right. the school. Right, and it, you know, and so that's an anecdote, and it's a great one. You would want to, to collect more data and see if that replicates itself anywhere else. But the point is, again, my point, maybe it's that, maybe it's motivation, who knows? You can't even have that discussion right now, because if you go to Concord right now, they're going to be asking, well, what should this tax rate be, and how come those guys are paying more than these guys, and are doing the income tax, and oh God, we were supposed to get all this money from Kino, and we didn't, so what, if, right? That is not even going to come up. It's not even going to be discussed, because it's all about money. So yeah, I, I'm sort of making my point for you. Thank you. Um, so, so I think we can ask. Um, this is the, by the way, this is the original eye shovel. It didn't have any connectivity or anything. <laughs> um, so I think, you know, when I think about things, I go, I like to go back to first principles and the questions like, so how did we become obsessed with money? How did that actually happen? And I think, this is my analysis, I think it has to do with a faulty idea that we have about fairness, okay? Um, fairness was the issue in the Claremont cases. They went and said, this is not fair. These, town, these kids and, and, and towns are being treated unfairly compared to those. And the thing about fair, and that's actually the issue now, right? That's what they're talking about. Going around the state and encouraging people to go to Concord and talk about how it's unfair that towns are paying a higher rate, other towns are not. And the thing about fairness is, it's a very powerful word. It's a very powerful concept. It's one of the first things you learn to complain about as a kid, right? That's not fair. He got three <laughs> cookies, I got two. He got to stay up, I didn't. And they learn that because it's, it works, yeah. right? People feel bad if somebody's being treated unfairly and you feel like you have to act, you have to do something, right? And so it's a, it's a great choice if you're trying to get people to follow you somewhere to raise this flag of fairness and say, follow me, we're going to make things fair, okay? And so my belief is nothing can change regarding education until the word fairness is reclaimed, so to speak. We need to take the concept of fairness in the concept, context of education and actually make it mean something that takes us away from money and towards achievement. And until that happens, you know, for lack of a better word, we're screwed. Um, and so I think that if we can do this, and this is what I want to talk about now, this is a different concept of fairness. And I believe it's one that promises to give us better results in terms of student achievement and cost us a lot less money. 
right? Which is a different way, everybody else is like, well, we need more money to get better results. I think we can actually spend less money to get better results. Um, so this is a picture of the current way that we run schools, okay? It's basically students start out, you put them in for 12 years, you see what happens, okay? Some of these kids are out here taking community college courses and learning to weld or they're, you know, taking, you know, six uh, AP courses. Some of these kids can't read, right? Or they can sort of sound out words, but they can't, you know, at the level where to read a paragraph, by the time they've gotten to the end, they don't remember what the beginning was, okay? And then after 12 years, we say, okay, um, to these kids, we say, okay, you know, thanks. Don't let the door hit you in the butt on the way out. And to these kids, they're like, thank you for funding part of my college education, right? Um, and the thing is, during this time, what we are spending on each of these kids is essentially the cost of a house. It's 180,000 bucks on average, okay? Which is, you know, you talk about 15,000 a year, 20,000 a year, and you add it all up and you're like, maybe we should just buy in the house, you know? Um, so this is grossly unfair to two groups of people, at least two groups. The first is the students who are, are not actually learning, who are being graduated, right? We have a 90% graduation rate, a 40% proficiency rate. So we're kicking out a lot of kids who actually haven't learned what they were supposed to learn. And this represents all the stuff that they didn't learn, that we paid for them to learn, but they didn't learn. And this represents the part that's unfair to taxpayers, okay? This is stuff that's above and beyond what anybody would reasonably consider an adequate education. This is the Cadillac Ferrari part of education, right? The Porsche part. And so these two kinds of unfairness um, can actually be remedied by making one fundamental change to the way that we think about this, 